Hi, I'm CJ Altmerger, TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. We appreciate you tuning in this morning. We've got a brand new 2023 Cimarron Steerwalt sitting behind me. This is an air ride 30 foot cattle trailer. This thing is extremely well equipped. Bear with us, we're gonna walk you through a lot of options and a lot of features that we feel really add a lot of value to this trailer and you're gonna really enjoy this type of a setup. So before we get into it, we'll take a look at the drawing. I'll show you a couple dimensions on the trailer and how it's set up. So like I mentioned, 30 foot on the floor. We have 24 foot of stall area, six foot front tack room on this one, uh, eight foot wide and six four tall. That's kind of our standard go-to dimensions on this type of a setup. Uh, it's amazing how this trailer has evolved. Um, the early, I believe it was 2010, 2011, the first Steerwalt model came out. You know, they're talking 28 foot, one traveling gate, one fixed gate, four foot front tack. And now it's evolved into, again, the most common that we actually inventory here is a 30 footer with a six foot front tack, two traveling gates and air ride. Um, and these type of bigger trailers like we're gonna look at today, you know, we really won't order them in for inventory unless it's set up with air ride suspension. Um, we'll talk more about that and the benefits that come along with it. But buckle up, we've got a lot of stuff we're gonna cover on this trailer. A lot of extra features on it. Um, again, extremely well set up trailer that we're gonna take a look at. One of the very first things is underneath this nose here. I've got the actual door rolled up, but this is the enclosed front end. We'll shut it when we kind of step away so you can kind of see what this looks like. <clears throat> but we got a, a few things going on. First thing that we're gonna look at dead center here is this electric over hydraulic setup. This is an equalizer jack. Uh, Cimarron likes to use the one, the setup with the manual override. Uh, we actually prefer that as well. Uh, if there's a trailer on the lot that does have a manual jack and you want to upgrade to this, this is the system that we're going to put you in. Because on these, this type of setup here is you have the ability to get this trailer on or off a truck in emergency situations, low battery, something along those lines, you have the ability to do that with the actual manual pump itself. But when we look at it here, a couple things. Normally the spare tire is located over to the left. Over the years, we've migrated it over here to the right below this battery box. And the reason why is we just felt we were wasting some space. Let's try to fill it up, um, do a couple different things. So we located the spare over to the right. Again, battery box located directly above that. This setup here, we have a single battery, but this is a larger box. So if you wanted to go in and add a, a secondary battery, you could do that. There's also a battery cutoff switch in there. Uh, that way when we step away from this trailer, the last thing you want to do is reach up there, turn that to the off position. That way it kills all power to this trailer. So if we leave a light on, you know, somewhere in the tack room, a load light, it's not going to drain this battery down. So when we come to hook up, we shouldn't have a dead battery. Um, that is a, a kind of a pain when you do come up to a trailer with a hydraulic jack and then you either have to plug it into the truck, give it a few minutes to give enough juice, um, to go ahead and get it on the truck itself, or you're gonna have to jump it or charge it. But when we go to park this trailer and step away from it, that's the last thing you should do is just reach up there and turn that off. Over to the right of the box is our onboard air compressor. So this is a self-contained compressor. Everything's right here. We don't have to have air from the truck, anything like that. All we do is we turn this on, we put it in the raised position. It is that simple. When you are pulling this trailer, I don't care if you have cattle on or not, turn this guy on and put it in the raised position and go. It's better on the, the equipment as far as the trailer itself. Better on, I mean, just the pull from, from the, the standpoint of how this trailer will travel down the road itself. Um, and then when you go to put it away, you just turn it off, you put it in the lower position and then you clear the lines. Uh, this is a really important step here. We've actually got to walk through really brief i mean it doesn't have to go into a whole lot of detail it's pretty quick and simple but we've got about a minute long video where we walk you through this operation but this piece here this cable you see you know what happens is is air creates condensation which as you can see we've got snow on the ground and we got well below freezing last night to where um, when we step away from this trailer we want to drain that because we don't want that that condensation to to start create, you know, creating from that air itself in these lines, we don't want it to freeze and crack. So we want to get rid of that air in that, in that system. 
Um, it will actually drop the trailer and push the air out of the bags, but that's a final step there. But there is a how-to video out there that we've done with that. The other thing, if you look at the bottom of this gooseneck with this enclosed front end, we did the expanded metal on the bottom there. And the reason why we did the expanded metal is just from the standpoint of if you want to throw something down in that bottom, you can. You can do a solid piece of aluminum down there. Uh, it's just kind of a personal preference. But we did put on this left-hand side here um, brackets for a generator because this does have 30 amp breaker package on it and some power outlets. So this type of setup here is when you when you are at the show and you're showing off this trailer, you roll this door open, you have it. It's somewhat enclosed, but we wanted that heat. You know, you want that exhaust out of here. Um, so that's why that we went with the expanded metal on this one. And then the other reasoning for moving that spare over is we, again, felt like it was wasted space and let's try to utilize it. We understand you're gonna be carrying a lot of stuff with you. So we put these four big hooks up here. So they're really deep off the actual gooseneck deck itself or the drop wall here. And then it's got, you know, again, a hook up here. But this is a great place for those larger extension cords, hoses, those type of items that you're gonna be dragging to shows. You can store them up out of the way. It's one less thing to put in the tack room. I know some people like to throw like a tire changing ramp and some tools in these enclosed front ends. Uh, again, it's some space that we can utilize and, and take advantage of. So there's the roll up door. We also put a 16 inch awning light underneath this bottom here, an LED light switches over here by our jack. But as you can see, you can flip this guy on as you're hooking up, you know, you have to think about where your cargo light is on your pickup. So a lot of the times the trailers are going to block that. So let's give you a little bit of light coverage. You can shine in here again, do what you need to, whether it's getting the spare out, maybe it's getting some tools, anything along those lines. But, you know, it shoots off this diamond plate off of this enclosure. So when you are hooking it up, it does give you some light coverage It shoots off of that. So this nose standard on on Cimarron's is an 8.2. But because of this enclosure, it's nine foot. And I really like that Cimarron does that because if a lot of other manufacturers will just enclose the front end, and when you drop a tailgate in a long box, I mean, it's right here. You have got to pay attention when you're hooking up. You wanna make sure you're square because if you're, if you're off a little bit, a corner of your tailgate will potentially get into this. But they extended it so we don't have to worry about that as much. Um, you can literally drop a long box tailgate and you can still walk behind that area between the truck and that trailer itself. Now we're going to show you one more thing before we wander off here and kind of show you the tack. But I want to show you, they've been using a B&W hitch. So B&W actually makes this and actually sends this to Cimarron. But one thing over the last couple years is you will start to see this in early actual calendar year 2023. Yes, this is a 23 model. But in the old ones, they've got a handle up here. You don't have this lower hole drilled into it. This is the lowest point. So we talked about it, and a lot on our living quarters are bigger, you know, trainer trailers. And some of these show cattle trailers, we built some of these 30s or even bigger, and some guys are hauling them with haulers or semis. Um, so what we ran into is this would only go up so far because of our lowest hole being right there. Um, we couldn't get that that stem up there far enough for, to really make this trailer run level and and you know it was always nosed up so they built us a low profile one we've been kind of using it there's been a few of them that we've put on some trailers a uh, gentleman came and, and actually bought a couple haulers from us a couple weeks back and he pulls some of these cimarrons that we've built him and we i told him about this and that was one of his big things is one of those trucks he was going to buy if we could make sure that trailer ran level. So we went and grabbed one from parts, put it in there. Sure enough, trailer runs level. He was happy as could be. He said, I'll take two of those couplers when I come back to pick up the trucks because I want to put those on my Cimarron's at home. So this is a new one. You'll start to see it again. You've got a lower hole drilled into it. So if we run into those instances where we need to get it up, we can. And what it required was is a lower profile handle to actually lock in. So as you can see, it's just really easy. It's got a spot where it picks up and locks into place. Um, really smooth operation. Uh, B&W has done a great job with Cimarron when they've been developing these couplers for them. So again, you'll start to see those more on the early calendar year 23 trailers that are coming. 
Uh, but a very cool thing if you are having some issues with a coupler like that and you wanted to swap it out for something like that give us a call because our parts department can help you out and we can throw it on a trailer and get it up here now let's take a look at this so again as this has evolved usually a four foot front tack then we went to a five so we could get this side ramp on there you have to go with a five foot front tack for the proper bracing for a side ramp but we built a six footer and a gentleman um, that's pulled a few cimarrons from us he told his feedback was wow the six foot versus the five foot everything just fits a little bit better i mean granted yes we have more space but he said truly he felt like we had some wasted space with like upright boxes and blower carts and those type of items he couldn't quite get them stacked in there it was almost like um you know playing a game of, of tetris and making it all fit and he said that six foot just works so much better so we started going to a six foot with a 24 in the stall area and then this is the end result so you have this side ramp going in to the tack room which is fantastic because again as you're maybe it's a portable generator it's your upright box it's your fan carts you could literally just wheel them up the side ramp rather than lifting them up and over you know just through a man door which this one does have on the other side you know directly across from it and this is my personal take on this i know we have some customers ask for hey i just need a side ramp i don't need a man door going into that tack room from a safety standpoint if that ramp gets shut and someone is on the inside they cannot get out of this area so I like the, the man door on this side because if you think about it, if you get in situations where you're on the side of the road in traffic, your ramp is curbside and this door is street side. So it's a little easier for you to sneak into this tack room by having this, this walk through door. Some people will put a pass through door on the partition wall. I'm good with that as long as you got another way in or out of this, this tack area itself. But on this one here, you have your man door. We put a light switch right here at the door and then at the ramp side, we put another one up high so it's up out of the way. But again, customer feedback was, hey, I've got this side ramp, but my light switch is clear on the other side of this stack room. And you, most of the time, you're going to have stuff stacked in here. So instead of walking around, we wanted you to have the ability to go in and turn the light on on either side of this trailer. As you're looking at that partition wall, we carpeted the entire thing. So if you do have items you're pushing up against here, you know, it's not going to be rubbing against all that aluminum there. And then you have this airliner cargo track that runs across here. You've got some hooks. We gave you a few hooks. You can go on Amazon, buy a pack of 10, 20. There's some different setups there. But what's fantastic about these is you can just move these hooks anywhere you want. You know, maybe you put your upright box against it and then just ratchet strap it down so it doesn't move at all during transit. Um, but we wanted to, you to be able to sec, uh, secure some items on here. Um, I know in the hog world, you know, small animal in those pin trailers, they'll use these hooks, different items to actually hook feeders on as well. So there's a lot of versatility to this track itself. And then we actually put another one <clears throat> across the gooseneck deck wall. That way, as you can kind of see, there's a little bit of open space right here to the right-hand side. You know, maybe you could put something else right there, strap it down. It, we have had the question asked, well, why'd you go all the way across? Because of that boot box that's there. And the main reason why we did it is just because when they cut that piece, we just didn't want that kind of sharp edge just kind of out there in the middle. So we just extended it all the way across. And hey, if you need it, you've got it. If it's not there, <laughs> you know, then you're either having to add it or, you know, you can't utilize something along those lines. And then, like I mentioned, there's that 18 inch boot box just for some smaller items. As you can see, we got some booklets. Uh, we've got the 30 amp cord actually stored in there. But if you got some smaller items, you don't want to shift around, just kind of store out of the way. If you're showing off the trailer, it's a great bench to just kind of sit at, um, relax. If you need to jump into the gooseneck area, it's a step for you as well. And then, this is a new design here. This is their newer, what they call a calf gate, but it's a fold down gate. They've lowered the hinges so it rolls completely down. A lot of those in times they've had these hinges up a little bit higher. So those gates actually wanted to kind of hang and kind of bounce off there where this is more kind of flush against this actual gooseneck drop wall here. Uh, but that'll just keep items from shifting, sliding out if, if you're in transit, uh, just kind of securing them. 
you'll probably notice that this flooring's a little bit different. So what we did is, again, customer feedback, built a trailer for some customers, and his wife said, I am not crawling up in the nose trying to vacuum out that carpet when we get some feed or some shavings or some hay or something like that just in, embedded in there. I want it to be easy and clean. Over the years, we've done the rubber mat, but this is a, uh, we did this on our toy haulers that Cimarron builds back in the garage area, and we really liked it. It's this gray rubber, it's got this kind of diamond, you know, plate kind of grip to it, um, but it's really easy to clean. It's got some grip to it for sure. Uh, and in this one here, we incorporated it on the deck itself, the gooseneck drop wall, and then on the floor, kind of throughout this whole, and this is one piece uh, is how they cut it. So it, it flows really, really well. And again, it's become a real popular option. We're starting to do it more in some of our horse trailers on the floor as well. A lot of stuff going up on in the nose. We'll start over here to the left. There's our 30 amp breaker box. You also have a power converter. So when you're plugged in the power, it will charge that 12 volt battery as well. Uh, but you've got your breaker, another outlet up there. LED light up in the nose, give you plenty of light coverage. We found that with this gray rubber flooring option as well, it, it just does, you know, these lights kind of reflect off a little bit more. You have a little bit more light coverage compared to the black mat itself or the carpet kind of has that dull kind of look so it really doesn't shine off of there. Then we've got this apparatus up here to the right hand side. This will store four 24 inch fans with the motor down. So you'll be able to slide those fans in here, kind of secure them, get them up out of the way off the deck. You can store some other items below them. Um, but it's actually better on the coils for those fans itself uh, by having this type of a setup. And believe me, you can, you know, more likely you'll be able to grab the first two by your hand. Um, and then from there forward, uh, my trick and recommendation is keep a show stick somewhere close. You'll be able to hook the, the uh, actual cages and pull those fans back towards you. So it has this heavy UHMW plastic that those will ride on. So it's real smooth and real simple for those to just slide um, when we're actually going to put them out. And then the door actually secures on the back and then you got a pin that goes in there. So it secures those items as you are in transit. And then we've got this tray over here to the right below that. That is gonna store our plexiglass that I'll show you here in a few minutes as far as that's concerned. But again, it's just, let's find places where things to live. Um, that way we don't have as much of a chance of items breaking and those type of scenarios. The very last thing is we kind of, I blew past it, that was my fault. Uh, but on this partition wall, we have these bigger hooks up here as well. These are their utility hooks, a lot deeper than the old bridle bridle hook style that they'd put in from horse trailers, and then also a lot taller. These are aluminum powder coated. So again, bigger cords, bigger hoses, those type of items fit really well on these hooks up here as well. As you come out of the ramp, you're gonna notice there is a 16 inch awning light again above going into the tack room. And then we did another one going into the ramp actually into the stall area. So you've got a couple exterior lights on this trailer. Believe me, you are gonna be doing something in the dark. So loading and unloading, it's gonna be nice to have those. We added a few extra um, LED button lights to the top rail just to kind of, honestly, it makes the trailer look sharp. You get these trailers at night, they're small, but they put out a lot of light, not a big power draw with them being LED. Uh, we feel like, I mean, those are spaced about every three foot apart on this trailer. So we like to add a lot of lights on. We have some customers that go every foot. Uh, we've built some where it's a foot on the top, foot on the bottom, they match. It looks phenomenal at night. So you can go that route as well. But as you can see, we shifted the ramp back on this one just ahead of the wheel wells on, on this trailer itself. Um, that's just for a different load kind of style. I mean, as you go up, it's kind of nice to be able to walk your calves into the right and then when you're pulling them off as well. We do build a version where the ramp is, is closer up towards the front of that stall area. It's a personal preference. If you want, we can build you one however, however you'd like. Um, but again, we keep a couple of these 30 footers on hand, on order. Lately, these things don't last very long, so I don't expect this one to stick around a long time either. So we got a couple things going on here. Up top, there's those two air gaps with plexiglass. So my recommendation on this one is because we have different 
sizes, I mean, different openings. On the other side, I'll show you the escape door, but we have a side ramp. But what you need to do is, is this will save a lot of hassle, uh, kind of like that show stick trick up there. Keep a roll of masking tape or painter's tape, something that's not gonna leave a real sticky residue, but you can ride on it and keep a Sharpie in that tack room. Because as you take out the passenger upper, put all those pieces together, tape them together, and just write that. Do the same on the lower, do the same on driver's side. Uh, because when you go to put these plexiglass pieces back in, believe me, you can knock it out in about five minutes to where if you don't know where all those pieces go, you're gonna be out here a minimum of probably a half hour and say a lot of bad words. Um, but it, it just kind of keeps things nice and organized. Uh, that is definitely a trick and I would highly recommend doing it. I mean, we've had trade-ins like this come in and all the plexiglass is on the deck. It's not even in the storage tray and we have to spend quite a bit of time piecing it all back together. Then you have uh, tie rails. You have an upper tie rail and a lower tie rail. This trailer is actually aired up right now. So it's about two and a half inches higher. Uh, when we lower it, it actually is, it, that's when I would recommend unloading cattle, loading cattle or equipment. Because when the trailer is two and a half inches higher, the ramps are steeper. So when we lower it, it changes that angle. So we have an upper, lower air gap, uh, uh, excuse me, tie rails on this one on both sides of this trailer. So you can tie out at this or if you're showing off of the trailer. And then you have this lower air gap with the aluminum fold down slat. Over the years, we used to do the plexiglass down low. It's a smaller air gap. So we can't get as quite as much airflow in there. But again, it's one more piece. And in these type of, this type of year, I mean, you know, right now we could have, earlier this week, I mean, we'd get below zero or uh, uh, below freezing. And then in the day we'd be up to 60, 70 degrees. So major temperature swing. So it's nice to be able to leave the house and maybe have this up when it's cooler. But as the day warms up, it's awesome to be able to just hop out on the side of the road when you're fueling up, just literally walk by and open and close these. Instead of having to take that plexiglass out, storing it, hassling with that. So these have become extremely popular. Um, but again, it gives us a lot more airflow in that lower air gap by doing the fold down rather than the plexiglass. And then as we come in to the stall area, obviously you have your side ramp. Which once we get in here, again, we got a lot of things going on. The early trailers had one sliding gate that usually would travel about 10 to 12 feet was all. And then, then, and then you'd have the, the side ramp itself. And then you'd have a fixed gate 9-3 off the back. And the reason why it was 9-3 off the back was an 8-foot chute would fit with the handles and the wheels inside that area. But as we started doing more builds for customers, everybody wanted two traveling gates or more. Just from the standpoint of complete flexibility, I want to manipulate the stalls all I want. So we have now gone in and started ordering all these with two traveling gates, just because you can do whatever you want in these stall areas. As you can see, this very first one I actually shoved up against the partition wall. There's a second spot for the second gate to roll up here and lock in. So if you want one big stall, you can do that. This type of setup we have currently, two stalls. We incorporate this gate, and then all of a sudden we got three stalls. But you can start setting these on every upright post here that you see. And then as you get into the larger posts where you're going to have door openings, wheel wells, you're going to have a notch that it actually goes into as well. But that way, you know, you can, again, manipulate these stall sizes all you want. I mean, just put yourself in the position of, hey, I'm dragging some heifers, dragging a bull, got some pairs, you know, a, a cow-calf pair that you're dragging to a show. Well, now we can shrink one of these down maybe put that bull in one stall, change another stall to fit that cow-calf pair comfortably. But again, now we're not wasting, you know, a fixed gate that's 10 foot section and you're putting that one bull in there all by himself or that pair in there. We can really manipulate these stall sizes again, give you a lot of flexibility. You have 24 foot of this stall area to work with. The, the rail that these run off of goes to the back of the trailer a couple feet off. Uh, just because, I mean, if you're going to do something at the back, you're probably not going to do anything smaller than, you know, a couple feet. So we ran that track back there. If you wanted to add additional gates or a different style gate, you know, we can have those built and these can be swapped out as well on these Cimarron's. We opted on this one for the 48 inch swings with no threshold. 
So you'll see that the cattle don't have anything to step over. Um, but our thought process behind it was, is, you know, over the years we've always been a rear load on most stock trailers with the gates swinging over towards passenger side. Well, that's how we built them, but then we got to thinking about it and we're saying we're doing more load and offload off the side ramps. We need to rethink that and flip the hinges so everything's hinged over here on the right side in this trailer because it's easier to be able to walk a calf in and out and not have to go around that gate if it was swung the other way. And then on that partition wall at the front of this one, we did kind of, it, that's a, a rubber mat there, kind of more like our kick mats that you'll see on our horse trailers there. But that way, you know, maybe if you're dragging some charlets or some smoky calves or something along those lines, you know, they don't want to rub against that aluminum, maybe giving them a mark, um, but also just kind of protecting that a little bit more as well. But again, you can do different styles. We like the no thresholds, whether it's a slider or these 48 inch swings. Um, again, you can do different setups. You know, this one here is not notched for the fenders. Down at the bottom, you notice it goes down into a 90 degree. And if we look at the second one back here, it is notched for the, for the fenders itself. So this one here will travel in kind of that area. You can move it forward if you want, but that first gate will kind of come back to this very right ahead of the ramp and in this first um, post ahead of that. That's where that one will live. But again, you can manipulate these stall sizes in here based on these gates. And, and believe me, you'll really like that um, ability. Upper tie rail, lower tie rail. There's a tie rail. The upper one is on driver's side. There's not an upper on the passenger side. We could add that if you want, but there is a lower uh, tie rail on the bottom on each side, but that's also to kind of protect that opening a little bit, you know, just so somebody doesn't try to get a head out of there, a foot out of there. Again, it protects that a little bit more from that standpoint. You have LED lights in here. We've got LED lights on both sides of this trailer. We did a bunch of them. Uh, you're also going to notice in the top rail, there's some outlets that we've spaced in here as well. So if you are showing off of this, um, maybe you want to run a set of clippers. Maybe you're trying to get somebody ready for a show. Maybe you want to put some fans in here. There's some different brackets that we can get to actually put some fans to where you can get some air movement in here if you're actually showing off the trailer. Um, but we did some outlets up, tie, up high for you. And then again, we did some secondary switches because... When you're coming in here, the light switches are usually all at the back, which they are on this, but I can walk in here and turn on these interior lights um, and then the, the exterior on this uh, passenger side of the trailer itself by coming in and out of here. But these gates are really, really easy to use. I'll show you just how easy they are. You shut your center gate, you break it loose from the sidewall. The kind of tip is just kind of stay in the middle so it's nice and balanced. But very smooth operation. I like that it comes off the roof itself because, you know, you can bed deep in this trailer. And if it's off of the rails on the sidewall, you really have to keep those balanced. But then it's a lot harder with the shavings. Where this, you can kind of manipulate that gate, kind of swing it one way or the other. Um, but a really cool setup there. Again, we can create a lot of airflow through here with that lower air gap. Think about where your calves are. Their chest floor is their radiator. So if we can get that air down low to them, it'll help, help keep them nice and cool. Uh, some people run with the air gaps open in the summertime. Some people, they run with them in there just to keep the sun off of the cattle. Because you have this insulated roof that's standard on every single Cimarron, it keeps this stall area about 20% cooler than aluminum sheeted roofs. So here's a little history lesson, lesson for you. The very first one that Kirk started dragging around was 6'8 tall. This one's 6'4. If you get right here in the middle, it's about 6'6. Six, six. So it, it, with that bow, you do gain a little bit of height right there. But he was running a 6'8 because he knew I have to get the heat away from the cattle. And heat rises. So he went 6'8, but then figured out, wow, this roof makes a massive difference on temperature control and keeping it cooler in this stall area. So went to 6'4 just for that reason. So now we can have a lower profile trailer. We're not catching as much wind. Um, and again, it's still, you know, you can still use this trailer and, and not have to be hunched over. Now, I'm not, it's not as big of a deal. I mean, people that are 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, you're gonna have to probably duck a little bit. 
um, but you do have that bow that gains you a little bit here. But again, the main thing is, is it really keeps the stall area cooler, so we don't have to have that height. And then we have these two-way roof vents, so we can manipulate that airflow a lot more. We can really force air down to the cattle if we need to, and they're open forward in the winter months. If with all that body heat in here, as it starts to rise, you can open them to the back so it releases that air out and it's not forcing that real cold air down on them. It's completely up to you. But we've heard time and time again, some people say, hey, there's, I know how much vent I can open or how many I have to open with the bottom because they'll come in here and they'll say, I know I have too much airflow going on in here because I've got shavings on the calves back. It's just creating a cyclone. So they shut some things down, figure out how to operate it just right for them. And, you know, again, we can keep those animals nice and comfortable. The other thing too, is it's really stout. I mean, it'll take some substantial hail. Um, so you don't have that eyesore of those aluminum roofs having to deal with insurance. I mean, not to say you can't do damage to these roofs, but it takes a massive hailstorm. It'll take 150 pounds per square foot on this. So you can walk on this roof, not have to find a bow um, to actually walk on. And one thing I also want to point out with that is look at these bows. These are more of a rectangular roof bow on here. So it gives a little bit more flex so we can have that actual arch to this roof. But this is what a lot of the competitors use for their, their side posts. So if you take a 20 foot stick of this, it wobbles like a noodle in your hand. If you look at Cimarron side posts, they're almost more of a perfect square. They're not quite. This is the same amount of aluminum in both these posts. This guy here, if you take a 20 foot stick of it, imagine a pencil, one fluid motion. That's how much stronger these upright posts are that Cimarron uses. And then the extrusion that Cimarron's been using, they changed to a few years ago. If you notice, it's flush. So we don't have those ribs that you kind of see where manure and dirt and other stuff can get behind them. It's a lot smoother. So it really matches up to those posts. Um, again, that's something that they've done that has really helped when it just comes to just general cleaning and maintenance of these trailers as well. Now, years ago at Stock Show, and, and this is a great morning for it, uh, it'll, if, as we leave this trailer sit out here as the sun comes up a little bit, the side rail of this trailer will melt off, but the snow on top of this trailer will be there for quite some time today. Because of this insulated roof, um, we have a desk at, that we take to shows and one day somebody said, hey, I've heard these Cimarron insulated roofs. They're, you know, it's just a, it's just a, <laughs> a rumor that they don't really work as well as they do. And we showed that customer the side rail and it had been completely melted off and dry. And boy, that, that frost and snow was still on that roof hours later. I mean, that, it, that goes to show you what this insulated roof can do for you. So really good setup in here. Again, two traveling gates is the way to go. As we get into some of the bigger trailers, some people will add in, you know, a third gate. You can do the different styles. Uh, it's completely up to you. In these type of scenarios where it does have notch for the wheel wells, there's an actual notch cover that we can buy and add to it where it'll flip up. You can move it around those wheel wells, flip it down, and it'll, it'll square off that 90 degree um, like we have on this front one here. Now, <clears throat> we have two 8,000 pound air ride axles underneath this trailer here. We have a 17 5 inch aluminum wheel. It's an SRW wheel. It has that look of an Alcoa. Um, doesn't carry the price tag of an Alcoa. So we do order some of those trailers with that setup as well. And then you have an 18 ply Continental tire on this one. Like I mentioned, this trailer is up about two and a half inches uh, because it is aired up. Again, if we lower it, it changes the angles of those ramps. Again, loading and unloading. Now this air ride system, if you ask some customers and they say, ah, that air ride, it's nothing but a pain. Kind of ask them a little bit more. They're probably used to the original air ride systems to where if you had an issue with a compressor, with a bag, with a line, it would set that trailer down and you couldn't move the trailer. You had to get it fixed. This setup here actually has rubber torsion axles and shocks so it has a shock kit that goes along with it but with that if something does happen it sets down on those rubber torsion axles and you drive down the road like probably your previous trailer that didn't have air ride and then you can go and get that addressed whether it's a compressor a line a bag something along those lines um, this system's been in use for you know well over 10 12 13 years 
uh, knock on wood, you know, maybe a leveling valve every once in a while, maybe a loose fitting, but uh, for the most part, very, very, um, you know, hassle free. Again, it's real simple use. It's turn on, it's turn off, lower and raise. Uh, but believe me, once you pull with one of these air ride trailers, you know, you're not going to go back. And that's the most common thing we hear from our customers is I will never own another trailer without that air ride system. We spend a lot of time and a lot of money on these cattle. So we want to give them every opportunity to compete at the highest level. And believe me, you can go to a show and offload a calf and you can probably go straight to the ring. You don't have to need, you don't need that recovery time, that real shock and jolts to their joints um, on those rubber torsion axles. Um, the best way I can explain it to you is behind an axle. That's the worst part of a ride on a trailer. So it's like riding in the back of a school bus. It's really fun when you're a kid. You want to sit at the back because you know you're going to hit those bumps or those railroad tracks and it's going to launch you. So Dexter did some testing. It took away 52% of the road shock behind the axle. So again, the worst part of the ride on this trailer itself. Um, and believe me, it does make a difference. Your cattle will lay down in this trailer like they're in the barn. Uh, but again, you can really take a lot of that front end off of, of your trips. Maybe you cut a day off of the front end from a recovery standpoint. Well, that's less time for you being on the road. That's less time you're paying for hotel rooms and meals on the road and maybe that extra labor as well. So believe me, once you space out the add-on, it is an option and it is an upgrade. So there is a price tag that comes along with it. But Think about how many cattle you're going to go, how many miles you're going to go to, how many shows you're going to go to, the years of owning this trailer. Once you space that out, believe me, it is well worth the upgrade to go with Air Ride. Again, these bigger trailers, we will not put on the lot without Air Ride. They won't sell. Everybody wants that Air Ride. So, major, major benefits there um, from that standpoint. A couple different things as well I want to show you. Amber turn signal, we put that on these bigger trailers, eight foot wide. It's just an extra indicator light. It will blink when you put your blinker on. It will indicate when you hit your brakes. And then it works as a bigger marker light as well. But on these larger trailers, you know, people don't pay attention to trailers. So we like to add those on. We do that on, uh, again, the bigger trailers, eight foot wide, all our living quarters, just because it's a small add on, but boy, it makes a big difference. I also want to show you these ramps are very easy to use. As you as you see, I kind of released it as it goes into the trailer. These springs want to actually pull it into the trailer itself. Um, this trailer is actually tipped towards this side, so you can imagine if it was level. But really simple to use. You know, your younger exhibitors can open and close these. The other thing too, I want you to notice this bottom heavy duty rail. So over the years, if you looked at some of those Cimarron's where that ramp was in these type of openings, it would just be a, a bottom rail that was just flat. And just, I mean, these are nice trailers. They're polished, they're, I mean, they're loaded. So Cimarron came up with this heavy duty one that matches the extrusion on the bottom rail as well. It just ties everything in. I mean, we have a door opening there, so we need to stouten that up. Um, so that's why there is that heavy duty rail there. But again, they added it and, and made it look so it just ties into the trailer. Again, these are beautiful trailers. Um, you know, when you see them fully polished, this one here's the black sheeted color. We do a charcoal metallic, silver metallic, champagne. You can do the polished stainless. Um, stay tuned if you're coming to Denver uh, for the National Western here in a few months, there's gonna be one you're gonna wanna see that's set up like that. But again, these lower air gaps are really easy to use. Fold up, fold down, simple as that. Now all of a sudden we got all that um, cleaned up. And the other thing too is I think this really ties well in by having the lower aluminum fold down rather than the plexi. I think it just sharpens up the trailer. Now as you get to the back, as you can see, I've got the slide gate open. This trailer is eight foot wide. so. We make this opening 36 inches. We have a little bit more room so we can get all the hardware out of this opening, make this opening bigger. If you're backed up against an alleyway, butt up against another trailer, moving them across um, in a parking lot, somewhere along the lines there. Maybe you're moving a fat steer, a bull, uh, a bred heifer through there. We wanted a little bit larger opening. So we were able to do that with the eight foot wide trailer. And then you're gonna have your rear gate as well that opens up and this also has a slam latch. 
so it'll catch that gate. I am a big advocate and fan of slam latches just from a safety standpoint. So if we're loading this up with, you know, maybe you got to haul some pairs or, or putting some calves in here where you got a full load, by able to get that thing slammed, it gives you the opportunity to then get your bigger cam latch locked and secure without you having to hold the gate shut just from a safety standpoint. Cimarron's also gone to a larger rubber bumper compared to their horse trailers. This was a little bit smaller over the years, but now this is a larger one because again, we have this hardware off the back. So if we're button up against an alleyway or another trailer, you know, we're not getting into that hardware, that rubber is going to catch it. So this is a newer, wider rubber um, bumper there. If you want to add a rear ramp, we can do that to these trailers. Right back here's all those light switches, exterior, interior. They're all on individual. And this is another small piece that we've added to quite a few of these bigger trailers is a backup light. Backup light on your truck is about 35, 36 foot down that way because of where it's actually gonna attach to the, the, the trailer itself. So we like doing these backup lights. Again, it's kind of like those amber turn signals. It's a small upgrade, but believe me, it's a great benefit to where as you're backing up at night, you can actually see what you're doing. And then you've got some load lights at the back as well on this trailer. So you have your exterior tie rails high and low, again on this side of the trailer, on driver's side. So again, you can tie off of either side of this trailer, lower air gaps that fold down as well. 16 inch awning light. That one's kind of centered over the wheel well. This one's centered between the two doors. So we have the man door going into the tack room, but then you also have a man door going into the stall area. So you have this escape door as well. If you need to hop in and out of the stall area there. And you also have fold up steps. If you look where I'm standing, again, this thing's aired up right now. So it's two and a half inches higher, but two and a half inches isn't gonna make much of a difference where this bottom rail is from where I'm standing. So by having these fold up steps, it makes a world of difference as you're going in and out of these tack rooms. Now granted on the other side, you have a ramp, so it's really easy there, but you've got the ability to hop into this stall area you also have a digital combo lock on this one. So if you need to send somebody to the trailer, you don't have keys, as long as this guy here isn't locked, you can send them over, punch in a code, and you can hop into that tack area itself. And then there's a good look with that black sheeting, the polish on the extrusion, the top rail, the bottom rail. You have that enclosed front end, which I think really just makes this trailer look really sleek. Um, again, it protects a lot of stuff, so there's some, some actual benefits to it, but boy, I think it dresses this trailer up nice. So, again, this is a 2023 Cimarron Steerwalt Signature Series, 30-foot air ride, 6-foot front tack, 24-foot stall area, two traveling gates. I can go on and on and on and on, but we just went through all that. So I'm going to give you the stock number on this one for reference. 5N221023. This trailer is available today. But if you're in the market for something like this, give us a call. These do not last long. We can build you something. We have more coming. Um, really excited about the Stock Show trailer as well to show you that one. But we do take trade-ins. Whether you're trading up, trading down, we can help you out there. Financing is available and delivery is available. We'll ship these trailers from coast to coast. That is not a problem. We can get it right to your door. So give us a call. Anybody on the sales team can help you out. Our number is 303-684. 3400. We appreciate you tuning in and have a good day.